Safe Software is pleased to present the 2009 FME International User Conference. This session is presented by Eric Jan Bodwitz, a senior software engineer at Vicria, where he focuses on work that involves Oracle and FME. Eric has more than 15 years of experience in the storage of spatial data in databases and is both a certified FME trainer and a certified FME professional. Thank you and welcome everybody. Um, as Craig said, um, my name is uh, Eric Ambodovic. I'm working at Vicaria, which is a company based in the Netherlands. Um, the company is founded in 99. Um, and that's about all that I'm going to say about it. Um, I'm going to focus on best practices of using FME and Oracle Spatial, a combination of the both. That's the wrong button, sorry. Um, my agenda has about three topics. First, I'm going to speak about the advantages and disadvantages of using normalization in the database. I'm going to speak about what normalization is and what you can do about it, what you can achieve and what disadvantages you got. And then uh, I'm going to speak about mapping data from file-based data sets to an Oracle database or whatever database you like. And afterwards, I got some commands about using spatial indexes in the database. So the first topic is about normalization. Normalization is a database technique that's used to um, reduce storage, reduce redundancy in the database. Reducing uh, redundancy is mostly an enhancement of maintenance. I mean, I can give an example there. Let's say um, you're a database or a data administrator in the city of New York. And you got these tables about addresses, parcels, streets, name them. All of them got a city name in there. That city name, New York, um, is, is there about millions of times. Yeah? When you update the city name, let's say you go back to the name where the city uh, started, New Amsterdam, which I like being a Dutchman. <laughs> New Amsterdam, then you have to go through all these tables, update all these tables, go back to New Amsterdam. Well, if you would have normalized the database, you would have an ID in all those tables, and you would have one table containing one record being New York, change that one record, and all your tables would contain New Amsterdam. Fairly simple. There is one other reason to use normalization, because New Amsterdam, I don't know who, you, who uh, can spell Amsterdam, but most New Yorkers probably won't be able to spell Amsterdam, and you get Amsterdam with a capital A, or Amsterdam with an E somewhere, or whatever. You got all ways of spelling that city name. Well, if there were to be a city table, there was just one way of spelling it. Yeah. Normalization makes updating data, as I just explained, easier. But it makes retrieving data sometimes harder. Yeah, because you have to join in all those lookup tables. That's the wrong button again. There you go. I came across this schema, this database schema, at a customer of ours which is extremely normalized. They got, in fact, tables called like this. Object type, object, geometry, attribute, and attribute value. It's fairly, very flexible to put your data in there, because if you got a new object type, it always fits. I mean, every object will fit in this schema. But, and let me explain that by um, giving an example. What I got in there was, for example, an object, a road object, which is just one object type. It is also one object. But the first complexity came when it had two geometries, being a road polygon and the center line. So that's, that's the first one on two in this kind relationship in there. And it had four attributes being 
uh, name, number of lanes, service, and use, let's say use by. And it had six records in the attribute values table, being main street for name, number of lanes is two, service is brick, but it had three records for used by. It's used by cars, it's used by bicycles, it's used by pedestrians. Now try to make a query and retrieve this kind of data in one record in FME. That's tough. That's really tough. Yeah, I would use stored functions or things like that in the database as a database technique, but just query this. It's really tough. And then the query that was used by the uh, company had some more restrictions. Of course, there's a location. We just want the data inside a window or a polygon to be retrieved. Um, we just want to retrieve some object types, not all of them. So that's a limitation on the query. On object, geometry, attribute, attribute value, there were start and end dates, which makes it even more difficult. And then additionally, and that was really a bonus, there were geometries that were partly inside my query window. Let's say that the road polygon was partly inside, but the center line wasn't. So I had to query all things inside and add to it all things outside, having a relation to something inside. Well, this query, when I first saw it, I, of course, I printed it out that it's reading better. 15 pages. And I'm quite used to Oracle queries and things like that, but it took me a couple of hours to understand what it was doing. Just the query. So we had a complex query to retrieve data. On top of that, there was quite a complex workbench to retrieve, to, to do things with those multiple value attributes, add them together or things like that. Of course, because of that, there was quite poor performance. I mean, it took hours to get a load of data. There was quite a bit of data in the database. And it had high memory cost. So updating data, great. Retrieving data, terrible in this, this schema. Just to peek at uh, part of the, um, uh, the workbench that we got. And in there, there were some um, custom data sets, and they were all using TCL, so it doesn't look that bad, but there is a lot of functionality in there. Functionality in there. So we were thinking, what kind of solution can we do? Well, we got this normalization model in there. And the best thing to do is, when you retrieve data, is denormalize it. Store it like you store a database. So use this schema for updating and then for viewing. Use a, no, uh, a data, data warehouse model in which we got one table per object type, your roads table, one record per object. And we did that by using just Oracle technology using PL SQL to get them over from one database to another database. This allows us to uh, get some future enhancements uh, in here because on this table we can go to spatial partitioning, which means that we subdivide the table in uh, spatial regions. And then when we select, we can select the regions, only the regions that we need. And um, we can, in the future, that will be um, divide the tables in historical data, and so data with an end date and data without end date, because 99% of our queries will be actual data without end date, and you don't want the table to grow unnecessary and not retrieve the data you don't need. And finally, the roads part, oh no, this is the rails part, but it doesn't matter. The roads part looks a bit like this. This is my complete workbench. Yeah, there is a fairly simple query in there. The query is no more than select star from where inside, and that's all. 
the data model is easy to understand because the customer got a roads table, a rail table. They understand what they're doing. They got an objects table, what's in there? Object types, what's in there? They don't know. Rail, that's, that's clear. Road, that's clear. And we've got quite limited functionality necessary in the workbench. It'll just be the clipping and um, we add some attributes to, to it. No more than that. And the performance went up over 20 times. I mean, when it was hours before, it got to minutes afterwards. And besides that, and that's not really an issue in 2009, I understand from the safe people, but the memory was an issue before, and uh, we use very much less memory this way because we let the database do a lot of the work instead of FME. Concluding this part of, of my presentation, when you use Oracle or any other database, I guess, uh, as a source data, you should consider how to store my data. Yeah? You should consider where to put the functionality. Well, I put it in a database, as we did, yeah? inside the tables and converting some of the data in the database already. Or do I want to put it in a query? You can in FME. I mean, instead of selecting a table, you can use a select statement and put your functionality in there. Or you can use, of course, load the whole bunch and then do it in FME. And next to that, you have to consider what database functionality to use. Yeah, you can use partitioning, as I, as I mentioned. Normalization, as I've shown, but which is not always the good way to go. And of course, be careful with indexes. And I found this quote on the internet, which kind of summarizes this part. You've got to normalize till it hurts, denormalize till it works. Okay, let's skip into the second part of, my, uh, of the agenda. Mapping data to database schemas. I think this is something that you all probably, if you're using databases as a storage, have come across. First of all, I want to use this, ex uh, this example, which is a screenshot of uh, a Ficrea application called Stromline, which is about streamlining, streamlining data from a central uh, database um, to, in fact, the people of local communities. Um, in here you see, I should point with my pointer, a graphical part, so we store spatial data and we store a whole lot of non-spatial data in the same database. Just as a, an example, underneath, schematically, it's fairly simple. We got one central Oracle Spatial Data Warehouse-like database, and we got a viewing application on top of that. And then there is a whole lot of different kinds of back office data. And of course, what else? To put it in there, we use FME. Most of the back of the office data is uh, non-spatial. We don't use FME for that. But for the spatial data, we do use FME. And in this example, I want to use uh, MicroStation DTN files as an example. Let's look uh, a little bit closer to the DTN file. Yeah, we've got a customer and that customer has something they call a level book. Level book is saying on which level, which kind of data do I have? Yeah, well, let's say on the first seven levels, they got buildings, um, next to that they got roads, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, this makes real easy mapping into an Oracle database if you do it with FME. Yeah, it's just saying uh, IGDS level one through seven, go into buildings, etc. Easy. But what if, what if my back office changes? Yeah, I got a different customer. He has another level book. Or I got the same customer using a different application with a different level book. Or, and you can fill in the rest, yeah. 
if my back office changes and I have that IGDS number in my workspace mapped to a table, my FME will change too. So I'll have to alter my workbench every time that level book changes. Well, at the first customer, we did it fixed. The second customer, well, let's, let's change the workbench once more. But as soon as we got hit 25 customers, there was no way doing this. I mean, there's no way keeping up, maintaining all these workbenches. So what we did was bring in an Excel spreadsheet. Fairly simple, an Excel spreadsheet containing level number, table name. And we bring in a joiner, joining this Excel spreadsheet to the features. And then afterwards we can use FME standard fan out, yeah, to just write them to our schema, the application schema of Stromline, in which the table name is fixed. Fairly simple and really easy to maintain because our customers, most of them don't know FME. So workbenches, no way. But they do know Excel. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. So it was fairly easy for them if they got new levels to get in there to just alter the uh, Excel spreadsheet and maintain their own application. So we didn't have to go to that customer every time that their back office changes. Finally, I want to um, make just a few comments about um, special indexes. Indexes in a database are used to retrieve data faster. But there is a, a backside of it. Indexes also have to be maintained in a database. So if you store data, data in a database, you're always updating those indexes. Yeah. FME tends to update or to, to store to a database in uh, statements. Every, um, every feature will be stored in a statement to a database, and so every time that index gets updated. If you've got large data sets that can take quite a bit of resource and so can take quite a bit of extra time to store your data in a data set where an index and especially a special index is on your tables. So on large data sets what I tend to do is first have a, well there, there is this option to um, have a, a pre-workbench uh, SQL statement and there you can drop your index. So what I tend to do is drop the index if I um, update quite a lot of data, quite a large portion of the data set. Then convert the data to the database. And after converting the data to the database, recreate my index. That makes updating data and bulk loading data a lot faster than when you don't, uh, than when you don't Drop the, drop the index. I just got to sign five minutes, so that took me off a bit. Sorry. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm coming to the end anyway. So, especially large data sets, bulk loads, or replacing complete data sets, yeah, first drop the index, bulk load the data, and then recreate the index again. And I guess that kind of finishes off my presentation anyway. So thank you for listening all and have a good rest of, well, there is hardly any rest of the conference, <laughs> conference but have a good time here. <laughs>